We're going to look at finding the highest common factor, but in particular at finding the highest common factor of larger numbers using prime factorization. So if we just recall what we would did used to do when we found the highest common factor, um, what we'd say, for example, if we were looking for the highest common factor of 28 and 20, we would write out all the factors of 28, those things that divide into 28 with no remainder, and the factors of 20, so those positive whole numbers that divide into 20 with no remainder. So there we've got the factors of 28 and 20. We're looking for a common factor, so something that is both a factor of 28 and a factor of 20. So we're looking for the numbers that appear in both of those lists of factors. And we're looking for the highest of those. And so you can see the biggest number that appears in both of those lists is 4. So 4 is the highest common factor of 28 and 20. It's the largest positive whole number that divides into 28 and also divides into 20 with no remainder. But if we were asked to find the highest common factor of 360 and 252, that's going to take us an awfully long time to go and list all the factors of 360 and all the factors of 252. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, um, break these numbers into their prime factorization. So let's have a look at that. Um, so for 360, we're breaking it up into its prime factors. And remember, that's just we keep going until we can break it up no further. So uh, 360 is 10 times 36. You might have chosen a different starting point. You could have done 4 times 90. That's no problem. We'll end in the same place. Just any two things that multiply together to give you 360. Then 10 can be further broken up into 2 times 5. Those are primes, so we circle them. 36 can be broken into 2 times 18. 2 is prime. 18 can be broken into 3 times 6, and 3 is prime. And 6 can be broken into 2 times 3, which are both prime. And now everything is at the bottom. At the bottom is prime. And so we've got 360 written as a product of prime factors. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. We do the same with 252, so I break it up as 6 times 42. 6 can be broken up into 2 times 3 and those are prime. 42 can be written as 7 times 6 and 7 is prime. 6 can then be written as 2 times 3 and those are prime. And so we've got 252 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. Now, if we want to find the highest common factor of them, first of all, we're going to note that what's in both of them, um, both of them over 2 times 2, both of them have a 3 times 3, and then they have some other different things. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do, is just draw a picture of this. It helps me see more easily what is going on. So in the yellow circle, I'm going to put everything that is a prime factor of 252, and in the green circle, everything that's a prime factor of 360. And in the overlap between the circles, I'm going to put the things that are that they share. So start with the things that they share, right? They both have a 2 and 2 times 2. They both have a 3 times 3. So that's their share. Then to complete 252, I put in the 7. To complete the 360, I put a 2 and a 5. Now, this picture can help me see very easily what's the highest common factor of the two numbers. Highest common factor must be stuff that divides into 252 with no remainder and it divides into 360 with no remainder. So it's going to be all that stuff that's in the overlap because in the overlap are the factors that those two numbers share. So the prime factors that the two numbers share are in the overlap and so those will be if we put all of them together the highest common factor we can't include 7 for example because although 7 divides into 252 with no remainder it doesn't divide into 360 so our highest common factor of 360 and 252 will be the stuff in the overlap 
2 times 2 times 3 times 3, and that is 36.